Hey guys, welcome to Dumpster Fire 101. So, first thing you need to do, okay, I lost my iPad. Okay, so I have looked up lots of different pictures of dumpsters for my dumpster fire, and I mean, we've got these big old crazy like mover dumpsters. I think I'm just gonna go for something simple, and I like this easy peasy Hunterton Country dumpster. So, it's long in the front, taller in the back, so that the lid flops down. Um, we've got these kind of um, angled tops on the side here. And then this is where the garbage truck sticks a thing in there and they lift it and dump it. So I'm gonna try to include all of these things, like this lip around the edge, maybe even some of this trim on the corners. Definitely these things. I want it to look like this dumpster when I'm done. So I'm using this for reference. This is down here. Um, I actually started one in class with a dim different dumpster because I had a different box. Um, and it is backwards, apparently. So I made ours like the dumpsters at the school, and I don't know if you've been out in the back, but it kind of is, goes up against the wall on this side, and then it comes up this way, and your lids flip open this way. Um, so this is the one I made with pieces from my egg carton box. So I just made sure that I had, um, two sides bottom and front and back. I've got them taped together right now while my glue dries. So I taped them together first to make sure that they fit good, got it really snug. And then I just glued along these seams. And this is as far as we got today. I took some of the pieces that we trimmed off and these are gonna be my, uh, my little trim edges right here. And then I'll take some other cardboard and make those um, like arm rail things for lifting it and dumping it. And I'll probably do the same thing with the lid. I'll make two individual flaps so that it can open on both sides. So that was with, I just had a box that was way too big for what I wanted. So I pretty much just treated it like wood and cut out individual pieces like a stencil. And I'm assembling it that way. So if you're at home, any box will do. This is just a granola bar box. And it's going to be kind of the same concept. So you need to think about what shape your dumpster is. And I want to go back to this green one. Ooh, same dumpster in teal. Ooh la la. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, so again, we've got this, this, um, this one is just square, so I don't even have to mess with this bottom of the box. So that's awesome. And I'm going to be cutting off. It's not that tall. So probably make the front edge about here, about here. So I am just going to angle this down and work on this for a bit. And I'm going to use my straight edge, make this dumpster as nice as possible. Mm, no four inches. Oops. Okay, and then we go five inches on the back. There's not five inches. What happened there? Measure twice, cut once. So mac and cheese box would work. Um, just gotta be careful because this is a flimsier cardboard than the egg carton that I used. Um, a lot of the people in class have like the little boxes that cell phones come from and stuff like that. You will need an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. Just remember not to uh, cut the surface that you're working on and don't cut towards your body or your hand, which can be tricky. You try to be careful to stay on your lines, so go slow.
And I'm making sure I'm keeping my fingers way back here. Because you know how I feel about blood on my stuff. Especially mine. And I'm going to be careful not to tear this up too badly. Because I can use this extra cardboard for my lid. And the strips that I can use. Ooh, for details and stuff. Like the handles and whatnot. Okay, so I kind of fudged that just a little bit. So I'm just going to take, we're going to paper mache over this anyway. So I am going to take a little piece of masking tape and just reinforce that edge right there that I kind of blundered a bit. Okay, so I already have my basic shape here. So now I'm going to go back to my picture. and see what details I want to add here. So this has this lip all the way around. So I definitely want to add that. Um, I don't know about this bar right here. I may not be able to do much with that, but I want to include these. And I'll probably reinforce these corners just a little bit, just so that when we paint it, um, it still looks pretty cool. So I'm actually going to take a picture of that. In case something happens and I can't find that exact picture again. I can make it as big as I want. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I am going to use the back side of this desk calendar as a cutting mat. Um, I could always use a um, just a big piece of cardboard or um, a notebook, an old notebook, or anything that you don't care if you kind of destroy the back of just a little bit. So. Let me move this on a little bit. I think I'm actually going to use this longer cardboard because it's thicker and this lip, this lip around the edge right here is actually pretty thick. So I think I'll actually use this thicker cardboard on that. And then it will be nice and fat. So I'm going to eyeball that. Because this is thicker cardboard and I don't want to end up with a janky cut. I'm actually making several passes through here and definitely want to make sure that your fingertips are back behind the edge of your ruler or it will be more than a what did you learn moment. There. Oh, of course it's in the tape. Ah, there we go. Okay. And that looks like that's going to be about right. I like that. Okay. And I probably, by gosh, I only need two of those strips. So I'm just going to use this one to measure my width again. Down there, make sure it looks so front. Set that off to the side there. Um, this one, because it's at an angle, we're actually going to have to kind of cut these at a beveled edge. So I'm just going to come in. And here's how I've been rolling in class with these, is gluing it on. And then I come back in with a couple pieces of tape to hold it on there, to make sure that it doesn't slide and it dries where I want it. And then I can pull this tape off later after it's dry. If I had a hot glue gun, well, if I had enough hot glue guns, I would just give everybody a hot glue gun, but I don't have enough, and this works just fine. And you know what? I should have cut this long enough to go past the edges to hide this little derpy edge, but I think I can go over with that with tape and hide that probably. Or, you know what? I'll just cut another strip.
This has tape on one side, so I'm gonna glue that side to my box so that the paper mache sticks better on the outside. Paper mache doesn't like to stick to that plasticky stuff. The glue doesn't care. And that gives you the trim around the top. Okay. I'm going to take a few small pieces of tape and tie these corners together. So I'm actually going to take my masking tape and cut it in half so I've got these skinny strips. piece of tape. And masking tape does actually work better for this. You can use scotch tape or you can just use the glue and use um, like clothespins and stuff to hold it together while your glue sets. Just whatever you need to do to make it work. Um, the reason I recommend masking tape instead of scotch tape is because um, masking tape is more papery and when we paper mache or paint over top of this, it just adheres better to this papery surface than it does the slick, shiny, plasticky surface surface on scotch tape. But if that's what you got, then do what you need to do. It'll it'll be okay. It's just a dumpster fire after all. And let's see what else we've got. Okay, so looking at this picture, I've got this trim that I just put on. Um, I don't think I'm gonna reinforce these corners. I think I'm just going to paint that on and I'm gonna paint these lines across as well. I am gonna build these because that makes it really recognizable as a dumpster. So I am going to use my leftover piece from the front top of the box. And it looks like this is gonna be wide enough to actually make two of these. So that works out perfectly. Okay, so you know what? Smarter, not harder. Except like I can't see my line now. Gosh darn. sure I didn't get too happy about it. Okay, cool. So this is going to be perfect. I am going to try. Okay. So if we look at these supports, you can tell they kind of wrap around the front edge here. Whoops. Straight reflection. That is not helpful. Okay. So we're going to make sure that we attach it kind of the same way they've attached it on the actual dumpster. I'm going to ignore these little braces here. But for the most part, I'm going to fold this square and leave these tabs on the end to wrap around the corners of my dumpster. So I am going to work that out with a piece of paper first because I don't have a ton of extra cardboard to mess up with. So I'm just gonna use a spare piece of paper and using my little arm piece as a template, cut that out, maybe. Oh Lord, I am like determined to like damage my own self here. And I've met me, so I'm going to work this out with paper first. If 
before I mess up my little pieces of cardboard because that is it. I don't have any extras that size. Okay, so this is the same size as this. And what I want to do is build that little hollow arm. Okay, that'll work. All right, so it's more rectangular in my picture, but mine is gonna be more square. So what I did was I folded this piece of paper in half and then opened it up and folded these in towards the middle. And you could probably even use something like poster board or a heavy duty paper for this. But I'm gonna try to do it with this cardboard. And I'm gonna need to open it up and cut one of these tabs back. So this is three inches wide. And my tab is almost four inches wide. So I've got a little bit of overhang on each side, which is perfect. So I've got four edges here. I only need to keep the tab on one. So I'm gonna keep one of the middle ones. I feel like that'll be sturdier. Make sure you do the same one on each side. here. And I will have to take this edge and that will give me my little square handle like so. And then these tabs are what wraps around the edge of your dumpster like that. So now I just need to use this as a template on my cardboard pieces. So what I'm doing, I can't zoom in. Um, I'm actually drawing a line at the end of this where all of my folds are, because what I'm going to do, this isn't gonna bend straight because it's cardboard. So I'm actually going to score this to make it bend. So right where I know that fold needs to be, I'm gonna cut all the way through where that tab is, and then I'm just only gonna cut about halfway through the rest of the way. Okay. So I scored it and now it will bend right there. But I'm not scoring it all the way through, obviously, or you're gonna end up with strips. But anytime you're trying to get cardboard to bend, and bend in a nice straight line, this is your best bet. Oh no, I got off my ruler, crud. I like these clear rulers because it's a lot easier to see my marks through. Okay, and I, I almost cut too deep on that one, but it is bending better than this one, so maybe I'll cut this one just a tiny bit more. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, one more. In tabs all the way off. I don't need those. Ooh, yeah, I 
could not cut my fingers off. Okay. So I have this and that is why templates are awesome. Feeling this one is not going to be glueable, so I am going to take my tape and line it up straight along that edge. Bring this one up and line it up with that edge. And if you have big old shrucky fingers, good luck to you. Okay, so I have this. So I am, because I need it to bend around my dumpster, I am going to make a score mark here. And here. I didn't cut it all the way through, just enough to let it bend. And I want this to be consistent on both sides. So I think I'm going to come down one centimeter on the front from the top. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I want it to look parallel to the bottom. It looks pretty parallel. Okay, so again, I'm going to take a piece of tape. Just a little one. I'm going to anchor these endpoints. So there's one there. Make sure I'm lined up with my mark. And one there. And it's not tight all the way around. Well, it kind of is. It shouldn't be. I just need it tacked down enough to hold it steady until the glue can dry. And then I'll probably most likely pull that off so that we actually see that little tab that we went to the trouble of making. But from the front, we have that arm. So that's that so far. So I'll be adding one to the other side. I'm also going to take one this extra flap that I have here and make two pieces that will be my flaps. And I'm almost tempted to peel the top layer of paper off of this so that we can see that corrugated cardboard like the plastic lid on one of those dumpsters. Maybe we'll see how it doesn't really want to come off evenly. So I'm going to use my leftover hinge from the lid of my box and I'm going to attach that to the back of my dumpster like so and the top two pieces of my lid like so. So this is actually openable and you can flip one or both and, you know, super fancy dumpster. Okay, so I have both of my arms glued on and taped to secure it until it dries. While that's all drying, I found this bag of beads and bubbles and whatnot, and I will bring this to school because I think that a lot of these little beads and weird things in here would be good for feet on our dumpsters. I'm just going to use these little guys right here. And I'm going to prop this up so it's kind of even. And this is where I'm going to stop for the night so that these have a chance to dry. And if you've got a hot glue gun at home, good for you. Your construction's going to go a lot faster. <laughs> just, you know, be careful because cooked people meat from burnt fingers smells really gross and it hurts really bad. So don't do that. I am, if you want to get super crazy and try to make sure that these are all just, you know, like a half a centimeter in from both corners, you know, whatever. I'm all about 
eyeballing it. Unless it's something that needs to be super duper precise. And that's it. Ta-da! I have feet. So, make sure you cap your glue or you're going to have a nice dried out turd in your lid that makes it to where it is impossible to squeeze glue out. And that's going to have to sit and dry. So tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and start paper macheing this bad buddy. Actually, false. I'm going to make the lid tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do.